Okay, class, let's separate truth from fiction. Evolution says that one species becomes another species, or in other words, one kind of living thing eventually becomes another kind of living thing, given enough time and input factors. Of course, the time we are talking about is millions and sometimes even billions of years. But does evolution really say that, you might ask? From the website talkorigins.org, quoted extensively by evolutionists. In evolutionary biology today, macroevolution is used to refer to any evolutionary change at or above the level of species. It means at least the splitting of a species into two or the change of a species over time into another. But you might ask, how can one species turn into another species? The following statement is from pbs.org, a decidedly pro-evolution information channel. One species does not turn into another or several other species, not in an instant anyway. The evolutionary process of speciation is how one population of a species changes over time to the point where that population is distinct and can no longer interbreed with the parent population. But wait, at this point it seems that we need to define what evolution is talking about when they speak of a species. From wikipedia.org on the article Species. This is a lengthy and complex article, obviously written from a pure evolutionary standpoint, with heavy reference to and quoting of Dr. Richard Dawkins, the high priest of evolutionist and atheist. Here is the answer. So what is a species? There are quite a lot of definitions of what kind of unit a species is or should be. A common definition is that of a group of organisms capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring of both genders and separated from other such groups with which interbreeding does not normally happen. Other definitions may focus on similarity of DNA or morphology. Some species are further subdivided into subspecies. And here also there is no close agreement on the criteria to be used. Some biologists may view species as statistical phenomena as opposed to the traditional idea with a species seen as a class of organisms. In that case a species is defined as a separately evolving lineage that forms a single gene pool. However, the exact definition of the term species is still controversial and this is called the species problem. Okay, so evolutionists have a hard time agreeing on how to define what a species is. Yet, using this word all the time, they quickly speak of how one species becomes another species. Really. It is a scientific fact that there are changes within species or kinds of living things over time. We see many varieties, shapes, sizes, colors, and distinctions among horses, for example. This is true science. No creationist has a problem with this. The problem is when evolutionists begin mixing the word species for kinds. Any child can see that there are different kinds of living organisms. There are birds and there are fish, but there are no fish birds or anything like that, for example. There are monkeys and there are men, but there are no monkey men, for example. Additionally, there are many similarities between all living things, especially at the level of DNA makeup. It appears that there are common building blocks for all living things, much the same as the fact that a microwave oven and a television have many common building blocks, metal, plastic, glass, electronics, etc. And they even look similar, especially to someone who has never seen either. But they certainly are not the same kind of thing at all. So what do the human evolution charts say? Where did man come from? I mean from the so-called beginning. Following is the information given in every book on human evolution. I've left out the fancy Latin names and even some so-called evolutionary transitions to get to the point, but nothing is taken out of context or misrepresented. This is how an evolutionist tells us that man arrived here from the beginning. All life sprang from non-living material. This is where it all begins for the evolutionist. This is abiogenesis or spontaneous generation. Modern evolutionists hate for these terms to be used. They will even say that evolution does not speak to origins. This is a flat out untruth and a denial of what is in every evolution book dealing with human origins. Non-living material mysteriously becomes single-celled life over billions of years. The books then go on to say 
that the earliest multicell animal was a sponge. The earliest known descendant of the sponge that had a brain was the flatworm. The first vertebrate was an extinct species of a jawless fish. Certain fish developed limbs and became amphibians. Then came reptiles. Then two branches of reptiles developed with many subspecies within them. From one of the reptilian branches came mammal-like creatures, small shrew-like creatures, a fancy name for a rat. From these came the primates, and from the earliest form of primates came the lemur type of primates, and from these came the chimps, and from these came man, at least with a common ancestor. Now that really is evolution. From a sponge to a worm, to a fish, to an amphibian, to a reptile, to a rat, to a lemur, to a chimp, to a man. Wow! And the sponge came from a single-celled organism, which came from non-living material, or you might as well say, from a rock. Wow! From a rock to a man. So, SpongeBob SquarePants really is my great 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 granddaddy. Wow, that's amazing. And this, my friend, is the tale of evolution. One kind of living thing becomes a completely different kind of living thing over time. And you want to hear the sad part? When an evolutionist is asked to provide fossil evidence for human evolution, they will throw a sponge, a worm, a fish, a reptile, a rat, a lemur, and a chimp fossil on the table and then say, can't you see it? The totality of all the fossils tell the story. Yes, indeed, the story. As a child, I used to get punished for telling stories like that and then insisting that they were true. Didn't you? Unbelievable. Yes, unbelievable. Really. And now you know the truth.